In this video, I'm going to show you how to make three high-end looking home decor items using mostly Dollar Tree items. If you want to learn how to do it, well, then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter. The three projects I have for you today are a combination of Dollar Tree and Arteza craft supplies. The generous folks at Arteza sent me some beautiful craft supplies to see what I could come up with and share with you. So I've come up with three, as I said, and I really love the way they've turned out. If you're interested in checking out any of the products that I used for this craft today, you'll find the links down below in the description box, as well as 10% off given by Arteza for my amazing viewers and subscribers. You'll also find a link for Arteza's YouTube channel if you need a little bit of ideas and inspiration. Well, I'm pretty sure you want to get to these projects, so smash that like button down below and we will get this party started. So to get started on the first project, what we're going to do after you take off all your wrapping and labels and all that good stuff, take your little glass cutting board here and remove the little rubber knob thingies that are on here. They do come off pretty easily, so just remove those and any residual glue that might be on there. And then we're going to take these out and we're going to spray paint the smooth side of your glass with a metallic color of your choice. So I'm gonna be using this silver color, but the metallics look really gorgeous on this. That's why I'm going with a metallic. But silver gold or the rose gold would be great. And then the massagers, we're gonna be spray painting those black for this project. Now that these little guys are dry, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna put these together. Right now, they are facing upward. You first off, flip all of them upside down and then face them so that they are all going in the same direction. So each one has like a large ball side and a small ball side. So you wanna do them so that it's small ball, large ball, small ball, large ball, small ball. Okay, so you know what I'm saying? Then once they're all facing kind of like this, we're gonna be putting them, interlocking them kind of together so that they come together like that. And then we're gonna be gluing them together and this is what's gonna be forming the really cool and unique base for our tray. Now we are gonna be using E6000 and the hot glue to stick these together. So I'm just gonna do two at a time, removing one just to make life easier and take note of where exactly those little balls are touching in there so you kinda of know where to put the glue. And then do the same with the other one. And then we'll be able to flip it over. So decide which surface you want to be your top surface. If you want this to be the top and you set your glass on top this way, or if you want these to be the legs and you flip it this way and have this be your surface. It's kind of up to you the look that you want it to have. I kind of really like it this way. I think it just has a really unique, different sort of a look, in which case, you know, you probably would want to add some extra glue. Whatever side becomes your underneath side, add extra glue there to give this some extra support. So for me, this is my underneath side, and I'm going to add in my extra glue just to make sure that everything's holding well. I'm gonna give that a bit of a chance to dry and then I will be flipping it over and we'll be attaching the glass. What we're gonna do with the glass now, this is the front side that has the texture and you can see how pretty that looks. It just has such a really cool look and all that texture has, almost looks like um, a fur pattern or something. It's really cool. So before we get to doing, gluing this onto here, what I'm gonna be doing is using my Arteza chalk markers. And Arteza was so generous to send these to me to give a try. Now this one, this particular set here is the Earth Tone set. They're odor-free, they're water-based, they're washable, non-toxic. I mean, these are great. So you can use them not only on chalkboards, but they work really well on glass and a lot of other different mediums. So I'm gonna be, for this case, I know there's so many colors in here, and I'm actually gonna be using 
black. <laughs> so not exactly, you know, really going out of the box there as far as color, but you know, you, this is your project so you can make it however you want. So these pens, when you initially get them, they need a little bit of priming. You just shake them and then you press the surface onto something just to get that ink to come to the tip there. And what we're going to be doing with this is going around this edge of our tray here to add a little bit of interest to tie it in with those legs. So go all the way around and paint that edge. Now this is not, you know, a, a mandatory step. It's just something I think creates a really nice look and as I said, ties it in. But these pens really write well on glass. They're, it's so cool. So the edge is all done there and this piece is dry. So I'm gonna flip this upside down and be placing my glass on top of there. What probably would be best to do is put your glass piece um, facing the painted side up because we're the good side and we also wanna be able to put food on it if we choose to is the textured side and we had sprayed the smooth side. So now what we're gonna do, and this way we'll be able to center this, flip our glass so that, as I said, painted side is facing up. Make sure your piece is centered on there and then we'll be gluing this down. So I've put a dot of E6000 and of hot glue on the top of the ball of each one of those that's going down in place. And the one thing that's really important, the E6000 does something really weird to the paint and it will actually take it off. So make sure that before you actually set this in place, you know exactly where you're gonna put it. And once you set it down, you don't budge it because it will actually show from the other side and the paint will come off and it won't look pretty. And then you're gonna have to take it apart and repaint it and it's gonna be a mess. So anyway, just wanted to let you know that. I'm gonna leave this off to the side and let it dry thoroughly before flipping it over. And then this piece is done. And I'm gonna show you this pretty soon too. Okay, for project number two, we're gonna start with this cute little wind chime. It's got the little dangly bell. I got this from Dollar Tree. And we're gonna be removing these little hanging parts. I would highly recommend using pliers for this so you don't dent up your flower. And it bends pretty easily and they come off pretty easily. We are gonna be taking the bell part of this apart also because we are gonna be using this as a base later. So you're gonna to wanna to keep just this little part here. And then we're gonna be taking this outside and spray painting it. And now I've got these two parts off. The next thing I'm gonna do is remove this little part that sticks up here on the flower, this little piece, and use your pliers for that because this metal can get a little sharp and kind of work it a little bit back and forth. We do have the little holes here from where the chain was hanging, so I'm gonna fill those in with some hot glue, and then I'll be spray painting this piece and this piece here, the little bell we removed, with my Rust-Oleum metallic gold paint. So I used silver on my other project to figure I'd use gold on this one. But before we spray paint, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be bending these little leaves carefully up a little bit and give them a little bit of dimension. You're gonna start and do that with all your small leaves first, or your small petals, I should say and bend them as much as you decide you want them bent, but we do wanna leave room here for our votive candle to go in the center. Boy, those feel like they break when you bend them, but they're not breaking. They just do this weird little click thing. Kind of reminds me of those little clicker toys when we were kids. Our flower now, instead of being flat as it was, has a little bit of some dimension to it. Okay, now that my glue gun is hot, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in these little holes here so that they don't show. And then the next thing we're gonna do is flip this upside down and in the center, put a good glob of your hot glue, flip up your upside down your little bell and stick it on there. So that glue will kinda come through the hole on the inside of the bell and it will serve to hold it in place a little bit better. Now we're ready to spray paint these gold or silver or whatever color of your choice. And as I said before, I'm gonna be using my metallic gold here and make sure I get this whole entire thing sprayed as well as that underneath part. And then we're pretty much done with project number two. Are you guys enjoying my channel? Well, if you are and you're enjoying these projects, 
consider joining the Glue Dot family by hitting that subscribe button below and then give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think of these projects. I'm gonna go get this spray painted and be right back. So here this is all spray painted and glued together. And what I do wanna show you is another option for this. So if you just have the flower, but you didn't get the chime one with this bell, you can use these napkin rings from Dollar Tree as well. So even if you did get the chime, and if you wanna make multiples of these, but you want them to be at different heights, you can, this actually fits directly over the chime thing here and you can can stack a couple of them and glue them together so that you can have one that's a bit taller, one that's a bit shorter, have them at different levels. It would be a beautiful centerpiece. So for project number three, we're gonna be needing one of these glass vases from Dollar Tree, some painter's tape, a soft brush, or one of these little sponge brushes. And then again, from Arteza, I got these beautiful acrylic metallic paints. There's all different colors in here. There's silver, there's a couple different colors of gold and a brownish one. I mean, there's some really, really nice. And these are very reasonably priced and they are 100 and 20 milliliter tubes that each of the colors come in. So you get a really good amount of paint and they're really nice paints. Oh, you also will need some spray paint color of your choice. I'm gonna be going with gold for this particular project. So what I'm gonna be doing, I want to just do a gold rim around the top of my vase. And so I'm gonna tape off and cover the rest of my vase so that it doesn't get any spray paint on it and probably the best way to do that would be just to cover this with paper of some sort as well so that you don't have to tape up the whole vase. Just go around and figure out how much area you want your stripe to be and tape that off. So you have a nice straight line. Press that tape down really well because you really don't want that spray paint to get underneath the tape and ruin your line. Okay, I'm gonna cover the rest of this with paper. I'm gonna go out and spray paint this upper rim. And when you spray paint it, spray paint it so it's facing it's face down so that the spray paint doesn't get on the inside. I just threw a plastic bag over this and taped it on. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be anything fancy, paper, plastic bag, anything, but I thought I'd show you what I did. So I've removed all the paper and everything, the tape off of my little vase here and I love just even the way it looks now just kind of by adding the gold on there I think looks great but what we're going to be doing is using the Arteza paints here the acrylic paints and they're all the metallic colors I spoke about a little bit earlier and the colors that I have chosen out of this are the bronze pearl marmalade Azteca gold and pearl deep brown. I think those will look really, really great with this gold rim on there. So I'm gonna start with my darkest color first, which is the pearl deep brown. And these do have nice flip tops on them. Not sure how much I'll need, but I'm gonna start out with that much. And then either taking your spongy brush here or your soft paintbrush. I prefer the soft paintbrush because I just don't like to have the marks, but whatever you have available. And Dip into your paint. You don't have to have the brush super saturated, but you're just gonna go on the inside and start sort of tapping it on there as if you're sponge painting and just go all around your jar and do that. Now you're gonna want a nice long handle on this because this is a tall jar and we gotta reach way down in there. So maybe using the um, sponge brush things might make it a little more challenging. And these paints are water soluble until they dry. And then once they dry, they stay pretty steadfast. So, and I love, they have a lot of the mica in them. So they're very shimmery and really pretty. And go around and finish up the whole inside of the jar, kind of so it looks like that all over. And then we're gonna be going through and doing that with the other colors as well. So once you get finished with your first color, you don't want it to necessarily cover everything because you want your other colors to show through. Give that a few minutes to dry and clean your brush off, dry it off a bit and get it ready for your next color. So I hit this a little bit with a blow dryer. It's this paint is great because it dries fairly quickly if you hit it with the dryer. And now I'm gonna go in with my pearl marmalade, which is kind of a very bronzy look. And you can see that here. I really love painting on the inside of 
the jars because the effect on the outside is just so pretty afterwards. So you can paint on the outside if you plan on putting flowers and stuff in this, but the whole idea of this is that the shimmer comes out very differently when you're painting from the inside and looking at it from the outside. Now, if you do think this is something you're gonna wanna use later and put like real flowers with water into, you might consider getting some of that waterproof outdoor Mod Podge to coat this with on the outside afterwards, or I believe there's even a spray on Mod Podge that you could probably use. And I, they, I'm not sure if they have a waterproof one, but you might wanna look at something like that if you think you're gonna wanna put some water in here or anything like that. I'm not planning to. So you can see how this color is starting to mesh together. And then we're gonna be adding in other colors as well. I'm gonna do the gold afterwards. So I'm gonna finish up this bronze color and then we'll move on to the next one. I just have to show you this. I'm washing out my brush, but this is, um, you can see how much mica they put in these paints, these metallic paints. And mica is the little um, sparkly shimmery stuff uh, but it's so cool looking. Anyway, I thought I'd show you guys that. It doesn't take very much paint and I've been putting way too much onto my sheet here. The next one I'm gonna go with is the bronze. So I'm gonna put a lot less this time cause you know, you can always add more. So I'm just going with, I don't know, the size of a marble probably, I would guess. I'm loving the way this is coming out so far. And once I add that gold in there to tie this in, you guys, gorgeous! And I'm gonna now go in with my bronze and do that all around the same way I've been doing with my other colors. I'm not seeing as big of a difference with the bronze because it's very close to the brown. So if you wanna skip this and just go directly to the gold or whatever colors you're doing, you, know, you can do this with the silvery colors or you can do it with like black or whatever you decide. But there are some beautiful colors in here and they have even a pearl one as well. And you don't need to have any painting abilities you can see obviously. <laughs> Not much required as far as painting skill goes on this. Just get in there and tap that brush around and call it good. Now for me, probably I'm gonna do really heavy on the gold because any last spaces that are showing through there, I really want that gold to come through. All right, gonna go give it a little quick dry again for 30 seconds and come back in with my Azteca gold how beautiful these colors are you guys Ugh, i just love them there is a link don't forget in the description box below if you're interested in picking up some of these paints or any of the other great things that arteza has on their site go check it out so for this gold since it's the last of it i'm pretty much um covering for the most part everything so that anything from the front that's left with a space will show through as gold and I'm gonna be showing you all these projects as soon as you hit that subscribe and like button. <laughs> now I'm gonna show them to you anyway, but I hope that you will join our Glue Dot family and I hope that you are enjoying these projects, guys. Thanks for being here.